Education MEC Panyazale Sufi is updating the public on the status of next year's online school placements. The department received nearly 600,000 applications for the 2019 uh, grade 1 and 8 intake. Let's uh, listen in for a second. That applied, uh, 150,000, that is almost half, uh, applied for grade 1. So our highest demand is in grade 1. Um, uh, that, that, we, that, that we call the demand. And uh, almost 140,000 or, or 133,000 applied for grade 8. Um, so to date, so of all the 282,000 or 300,000, I'll just put the round figures for, 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 for purposes of simplicity. Of almost the 300,000 that have applied, as of today, 195,000 people have been offered places. Uh, so, so we know. Sorry. We know that 195,000 people that have applied on time to say, "You have applied. We are placing your child in this particular schools." So, so we've we've given them 195,000 parents received what I called happy SMSs on Monday, uh, the previous Monday that came. Yeah, the previous, on the 3rd of August, yeah. They got those happy SMSs. Uh, um, and by Monday, by, by the 7th of August, by the 7th of August, 74,000 of those 195 places have been accepted by parents. So we said to parents, you applied, uh, these are the schools that are willing to take your child. You've got seven days to accept, but by the seventh, uh, almost 74,000 or 75,000 parents said, and we accept uh, the offers that have been given to us. Um, uh, so, so, so 119 or 120,000 offers are still available for parents to accept them by the 16th of August. So those have already accepted are 75,000, but 120. Uh, must still accept. And that's where we have three main headaches. <laughs> People say, no, no, yes, we've given him an offer, but I needed uh, GP girls, uh, but you gave me uh, school X. So I'm still waiting to check whether uh, uh, you, you can change your mind. Uh, and we are saying you've got seven days, <laughs> seven working days. Let me emphasize that, because parents were asking. The seven working days, uh, for you to determine whether you accept or not. Uh, so by the 16th of August, if you have not accepted, you have forfeited that position, and then we are given to those that have not sent them SMSs. So those that have not received SMSs must not panic. We are waiting for the 16th of August. Because there are some parents that have given them three offers, for example. You find that your child has been accepted in three schools. We say choose. When you choose one, the two that we offered automatically falls off. And then we are taking it to the basket. Those that were buying World Cup tickets will remember this kind of thinking. <laughs> we are taking them to the baskets, and then we are offering them to those that are willing to accept them. So, so we've got almost 120,000 offers that are available that must be accepted by the 16th of August by parents. And failure to accept these offers, uh, as I said, you lose... And when you lose, we give them to remaining parents. So currently, there are 90,000 parents that we have not given them offers. And we are asking those parents, please be patient. So there are 90,000 parents that didn't receive any SMS uh, or email. They didn't receive any correspondence to us. And that's, I think that's where the majority of people are panicking. Uh, it's because the schools that they've applied, those schools are full. So we're waiting for the parents that have been given the offers to accept those particular offers. And when they accept those offers, we'll then be in a position to give to the 90,000 that are waiting. Uh, so we've got 90,000 parents that are waiting. And I want to emphasize this point. Everyone that has applied by the 28th of October will place. It will be you that will say, I don't want to go there. But your child will be placed. Uh, there's no parent that has applied that the child will not be placed. And I want to emphasize that point because that is very important. It's a constitutional obligation anyway from our side, so it's not a favor. Anyone who has applied, you will be placed. The only challenge will be we might place you at a school that 
uh, uh, we have not chosen. But we'll place from the school that they've given us the choices. <laughs> but it might not be your first choice, your second choice, your third choice. It might be your fifth choice uh, that we'll place. So we are pleading with the 90,000 parents that have not received any SMS that from the 17 after the deadline that we've given to those that have given offers, you will see movement. So that is why when you see these things, it will go, when you log in our online, it will say pending. The district is still finalizing that. And so you can go to the district office if you are impatient, and the district offices will assist you with that particular information. And that is very, very important uh, because it will then alleviate the pressure and the panic that majority of parents uh, are currently uh, finding themselves in. And we, we hope that this clarification will assist them to, uh, to, to really deal with, with some matters. The other problem is, and it's a major challenge, uh, I'm a victim of it, so I must not also complain, that the problem is that if you forget your password, you must go through difficult channels for us to verify it's you. We can't just make this information available to you. Uh, and that is why we plead with people, just ensure that the password uh, 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 it's something that uh, you'll not forget. You know, we are inundated with some, and if somebody comes to me and says, I forgot my password. And it takes almost 15 minutes for us to then verify that this is the right person. And that is why people will say, no, we are calling your call center. Not that, because we are spending 15 minutes to be sure this is the, because we live in a society of people that do wrong things with people's information. Uh, and people have entrusted us with their information. We have to be very, very careful. So we are pleading with parents, please. Uh, uh, and I know those that support some soccer teams. If you can just have a password about your soccer team and the last score that was scored against you, like 3-1, uh, you, you, you won't forget uh, that this is the pain that uh, you went through. Uh, 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 and, 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 and uh, you can just say the name of the team and say 3-1. Uh, and you know that this, this is the one I won't forget. Um, so, and that's the problem. And this has clogged our system. We must accept. Uh, at one stage, we're, we're receiving almost 14,000 calls. Uh, so we are pleading with parents to, 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 to really... Uh, you'll see in our statement, and we're going to communicate this over the uh, newspapers over the weekend... We are now password, uh, so that parents can be in a position to, to deal uh, with this particular issue. Um, let me confirm, at this present moment, we don't have a date for late applications. So anyone that has not applied, uh, please don't pressurize us to tell us the date. We want to place parents first by the end of October. It's only by the end of October we'll assess. But those schools that are already full uh, will remove them automatically from the system. When you do let the registration, it will be the schools that are, 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 are empty or that still have vacancies uh, uh, for, 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 for people to give those particular information. You are quite aware that we have also published uh, our draft amendments to admissions regulations. Uh, I know there's one section of society that is very angry with me. Uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm surprised and shocked why people are angry because what we are basically doing with the amendments is to, to, to remove the gray areas and, 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 and implement what the Constitution is saying. That there must be no child that is discriminated on the basis of their illness. You might not be aware, good people. There are schools that go to such an extent of asking a clinic whether this child is HIV positive or negative before they can admit that child. So we're removing those things. And I don't know if society becomes angry for us to protect our children. Uh, and I always tell people that, you know, it's very important that you don't dehumanize a child when a child is seeking quality education. So, so we are putting those measures. The second one that we are putting, and we're very strong on this one, that if you are poor, it means you must go to a Qatar education. It does not work, uh, and we'll defend this aspect. People say that we are opening schools to people that can't afford to pay for fees for those particular schools. Our argument is very simple. If a domestic worker works in that particular area and wants to take a child to that school, that particular domestic worker must not be discriminated on the basis that is a domestic worker. And that's the argument that we are putting. We are not saying 
somebody like me who is working uh, and can afford uh, should take advantage of this thing and not pay. No, no, no. We are protecting the, because access to quality education is a right to everyone. It must not be a privilege to those that believe that uh, their status in society means that they've got an automatic en entry to those particular schools. That is why in these regulations we are very, very firm. The third aspect that I know uh, I'm taken to task is the issue of race and language. This has nothing to do with overfall or this has nothing to do with a certain uh, section of society. We can't have a school that is saying, no, no, this school is for Corsas only. But if you don't speak Corsa in this school, because people look at it in, the, in, the, in, in terms of Africans. We are not, <laughs> it's not about Africa. Just imagine, and there's a school I know in Alexander. <laughs> Learners must pass that school, but this, because this school is only for those that are speaking Corsa. Uh, and, and those that are speaking, and the, the, the tribes that are disadvantaged in this part, and want to, to rectify, it's vendor speaking people and Sichonga speaking people. That there are schools that exclude them on the basis of language. I mean, there's a school in Tembisa called Tembisa High. It used to be one high school uh, uh, for vendor speaking people. That high school today does not take vendors. And vendors have to, uh, vendor speaking people have to travel all over Tembisa. Because there is a school that has decided that it's excluding people on the basis of their language. But those that fear the unknown, that just pick Africans uh, and say, no, 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 Lisufi is targeting African-speaking people. Indulge yourself. I don't have time for you. I'm making these things available to all South Africans. And by the way, you can't exclude people on the basis of the language they are speaking. Exclude them on the basis that the department has not given us the resources to have an extra teacher that can teach vendor, an extra teacher that can uh, teach this particular language. We would be in a position to intervene and put those resources. That you will see that even on this online registration, we have not excluded anyone on the basis of language because we want to rectify that thing. If there are 70 people that want a school next to them to have Sivenda, for example, Chivenda, will make that up, will take those applications and go to that school and say, yeah, there are people that want this particular language. How do we assist them? Do you have an extra classroom? Do you need teachers? Do you need textbooks? You can't just say, we don't take vendors. It does not work and it's not going to work. Uh, and those that are obsessed with this thing that we are targeting their language, uh, indulge in that obsession, but don't, don't invite us in that, uh, uh, in that party. We are not in the mood of that particular part. We are not targeting any language. South Africa belongs to all of us, and everyone has the right to utilize their own language for learning. But the minority must never uh, dictate to the majority forever. It will never happen. We might be the only country where the minority believe they can dictate to the majority. This country belongs to all of us, and all of us have the right to give our children the best quality education. There's no one that is privileged that it's only my children that must get the best education. Other people's children, they don't care to me. We are the state, we care for everyone. Uh, and it's very, very important that we care for everyone. Uh, we're not going to care for a certain grouping uh, that believes that uh, they can insult us, say we are dictators, insult us that are obsessed with race. When it's them that are obsessed with race, uh, we are not obsessed with race. We are fighting for a non-racial society. Why would we be obsessed with race when we are fighting for another? It's only those that want the status quo to remain uh, that will send uh, the insults that they are sending. All right. Uh